I've always felt a sense of presence in the wild landscapes of Alaska. I started photographing and making other types of art to try to pin down what is that connection that I feel so strongly to this place. It's just unreal in the best way. I grew up in Alaska. My parents took us everywhere in the wilderness on all of their adventures. They do fit, you just have to be careful. My dad is incredibly knowledgeable in the outdoors. A very safety conscious pilot. Fun is the goal above all else. But also there's this deeper element of appreciating the natural world. It's not like it was something that they told us or anything. It was just our entire lifestyle was about being outside and cherishing these amazing places. Coming from Alaska and traveling then outside of Alaska and kind of coming up against all of the stereotypes and ideas that people have in their head about the far north as being often, you know, vast, desolate, harsh, inhospitable. Nobody lives there. Why should we care? And I have to do what I can to show why it matters and why it's worth protecting or why it's just beautiful. I took a job at a wilderness lodge so that I could live in this really remote fjord in Kenai Fjords National Park. It rained all the time and everything was green and misty. There were animals everywhere. It was such an atmospheric and powerful environment. I really used photography to try to give a sense of what a place felt like. There was a way to work with naturally occurring colors of the landscape. Silvery color of rain reflecting light off green sea grasses. I felt narrative was able to come out of my pictures when I worked in a place over time. I got a job on a ship taking people to see some of the most remote parts of the polar regions. I remember my first season in Antarctica. One of the things that struck me most was that all of the snow started turning colors. Pink, green, red, turquoise. As temperatures are steadily rising, the algae is becoming more widespread. It's a very visible effect of climate change. And I think that it is important to realize and understand why that's happening and what that's signaling on like a larger scale that we maybe can't see. The first explorers to go to Antarctica were all men. Because those explorers became so famous, that is still the dominant image of a person who spends time in Antarctica. We would get comments now and then, you know, people who were really surprised to see women working there. So I started photographing my female colleagues and other women that I met down in the Antarctic region. Hoping that it helps change some people's perspectives about what they can do and what's possible. When I learned how to use a large format camera, it's 
especially like it over there. It forced me to slow down and to look at the world a lot more intensely than I had done in the past. I tend not to use the word taking a picture when I'm working slowly with something like large format because it feels like you're making something. It was an exercise of going out into very remote landscapes and traveling around on foot until I saw something that I knew was a photograph. Something that you don't even know what it is and you can't articulate. But when you see it, you know that's it. My favorite pictures are ones where people stop to figure out what they're seeing. That snaps us out of this mode of just recognizing and judging or thinking that we understand. The polar regions are full of phenomena that classify as otherworldly. The Bristol Bay watershed is the most prolific wild salmon bearing region on Earth. The salmon are also an important food source for the world's densest population of wild brown bears. When I learned that a proposed open pit copper mine could poison the waterways that could destroy not only the salmon habitat, but also the habitat of the bears, I felt like that was a story that I wanted to cover. To be surrounded by 20, 30, 40, 50 bears is absolutely overwhelming. When you experience places like that in person, the need to protect it is just obvious. I mean, you feel it. I was looking for another way to get people to care. I thought, well, what's more charismatic than bears? <laughs> I never really aspired to be a wildlife photographer and then I just found myself in all of these situations because of what I believed was right and worth raising awareness about. When I had done a few photographic series, all of them were united by a connection to the landscape. I realized that I needed to understand the Arctic through a much broader and deeper perspective than my own. In this part of the Canadian Arctic, people are largely living near the places where their ancestors did. Those changes from a traditional way of life to satellite internet and TV. That transition has happened within living memory. I lived with a family for four months in the darkest part of the winter. The intensity of the blue tones is like a painting. Everything glows in these incredible otherworldly colors. You notice the stars, you notice the faces of the moon more. I gravitated towards photography because it requires you to get out of your comfort zone and meet people and listen and learn so much about the world that you never would have experienced. Expanding the scope of the stories that I am able to tell is a really meaningful way to live. I'd learned so much about like what I don't know, so I went back. There's so much emphasis on sea ice disappearing globally. 
I was interested in photographing why sea ice matters to people. If we can see something that invokes compassion and empathy and also joy, we can appreciate that in a different way. There's a layer of meltwater on top of the ice. This beautiful turquoise blue that's reflecting the sky. Seal hunting at that time of year is incredibly collaborative. Each seal will have a network of breathing holes. It was amazing to watch the entire family in action. Teenagers learning how to be a hunter and provider for their families. How to prepare seal skins and correctly process and skin the animals that they caught. Indigenous people have known how to exist sustainably since time immemorial. That is an incredible wealth of knowledge. We need to be listening. Polar regions are places where the effects of climate change are happening first and fastest. It matters that it's happening now. Those effects are coming for all of us. Photography is a way to show people and make them feel something about a place that they may never be able to see or otherwise understand. So to me, that feels really meaningful and a big reason, the reason really, why I feel driven to do it. <laughs>